welcome back to Sinfully Scented. I'm Rebecca and today's video I'm going to be teaching you how to make liquid dish soap. This is the soap that I sell in my website but I wanted to share the recipe with you all so that if you wanted to try making it at home you can do so. Liquid soap making is a slightly more advanced form of soap making so if you've never made soap before I would recommend you start off by at least watching the lye safety video from the Basics of Cold Process Soap Making playlist uh, that was produced by Soap Queen TV a few years ago and I think it has a lot of good information that you'll need regarding safety and supplies that you will need in order to make this soap. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. I put out a new video every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the recipe. So to get started, we're going to be using 1,000 grams of coconut oil, 270 grams of potassium hydroxide, 270 grams of distilled water, and optionally you can add fragrance. I'm using Lemon Verbena from Bulk Apothecary. The first step is to mix up the potassium hydroxide and water solution. So I am slowly adding in a little bit of potassium hydroxide and stirring with a silicone spatula until the potassium hydroxide is dissolved before adding any more. Mixing up the potassium hydroxide solution slowly like this helps to control the amount of fumes produced. Once you've added in all of your potassium hydroxide and it's all dissolved, you can set this aside for the next step. Here I have my four quart crock pot and I have melted my coconut oil in the microwave. I'm just adding that into my crock pot. And I wanted to show you the temperatures of the oil and the lye solution, although we're going to be cooking this so it won't make that much of a difference. You can see my oils are about 120 and my lye solution is about 190. But since we're going to be cooking this, I'm just going to go ahead and add the lye solution directly into the oils. There's no need to wait for this mixture to cool. We're going to start mixing our soap. So I have my stick blender on high speed and I'm alternating between pulsing the stick blender and stirring with the spatula. We're going to be mixing this soap until it gets to something that looks like mashed potatoes. And this process can take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes depending on how much water you use initially. That's why I do a one to one water to lye ratio. It's just to make this process a little bit faster. I wanted to stop here for a moment and show you guys um, one of the stages of the soap, which is the trace stage. And most people who have made soap before are very familiar with this stage. It's when the soap is starting to thicken up and as I drizzle the spatula, you can see that the soap leaves little lines on the surface before it mixes back in. We're going to continue mixing until we get to the mashed potato stage. At this stage, my soap was coming to mashed potatoes and it got a little bit hot. And this can happen sometimes. The soap will get hot and it will start to expand. You just want to make sure that you're using a large enough crock pot to account for this. For this, I'm using a four quart crock pot and at about a thousand grams of oil, this would be the maximum that I could do to account for this expansion. So if you have a smaller crock pot, you just might want to adjust the recipe size. If it expands, just mix it with a spatula until it settles back down. And at this point, I did turn the heat down to low heat as well. We're gonna cover the soap and let it cook for about one and a half to two hours until it becomes translucent. This is about an hour and a half into the cook and you can see that it's slightly more translucent than it was when we started. So we need to do a clarity test to ensure that our soap is completely cooked. 
Here I added two tablespoons of distilled water and then heated that up in the microwave and to that I added one teaspoon of soap paste. You're going to stir the soap paste until it's completely dissolved in the water. What you're looking for is a soap that is completely clear, not cloudy or milky. It should be clear enough that you can read text through the soap without any obstruction. Here you can see I have it over this photo and you can see perfectly clear through the soap. Once your soap has passed the clarity test, we are going to begin the dilution phase. We're going to be adding distilled water into the soap to dilute the paste into a liquid soap. For this, you're going to be adding about two parts water to one part oil. So because I started my soap with 1,000 grams of coconut oil, I'm going to be adding about 2,000 grams of water total. I like to do this slowly in about 500 gram increments throughout the day just to give it time to slowly dilute, although you could certainly add it all at one time. I let my diluted soap cool in the crock pot overnight and then I bottled it up the next day at room temperature. You can see the soap is completely dissolved in the water and it's a complete liquid soap. It's a little bit thinner than what you would buy in the store because it doesn't have any thickeners added to it. And you could certainly add fragrance to the entire batch, but I didn't want to send the whole batch so I am portioning out some of the soap to add fragrance to it. So here I am adding about 3 grams of fragrance to about 250 grams of liquid soap. And it does turn the mixture a little bit cloudy at first, but once it sits for a couple of days, it will go clear again. It just needs time for the fragrance oil to bind with the soap. I bottle my soaps in these 8 ounce HDPE bottles that I purchased from Paper Mart with a flip top cap. I'll leave a link to the bottle and cap in the description box below if you're interested in purchasing this same bottle. And then for my labels, I am using the polyester weatherproof laser jet labels from online labels. I'll leave a link to those in the description box as well. Here you can see the front of my label, which has my logo and information about the soap. On the side there, we have the ingredients and the weight of the soap. And on the other side, I have a general warning and just to notify people not to use it in dishwashers. I also want to show you how the soap performs, so I'm going to clean out my sink with the soap and then I also wash the crock pot that I made the soap in and you can really see the lather here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you learned something about liquid soap making from this that you maybe didn't already know if you've made liquid soap in the past. Um, if you do make this soap, I would love to see it. Go ahead and tag me on Instagram. It's at sinfully scented. I'm gonna link that in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching. Next week's video is going to be another first impressions of some fragrance oils from The Flaming Candle. Never tried them before, so I'm excited to show you guys what I think.